Rio de Janeiro is often called a marvelous city, and it's not hard to see why. But although this complex and beautiful metropolis has seen its fair share of attention, there's still a mythical quality to the city when you discuss it with people in other parts of the world. What do you know about Rio de Janeiro in Brazil? The beach, yes. Just the beach. <laughs> beautiful beaches, beautiful women. And I think of, I get this kind of view of a carnival and like party atmosphere. One topic that often sticks out is also one of the hardest to understand. Favela. Uh, a big place with a lot of poor people there and a lot of crime too. The dealers kill people inside the favela. I think the favela is a really misunderstood place. But despite their largely negative reputations, some foreigners are now calling Rio's favelas home. These are the gringo favelados. One tea bag for two mugs. Because uh, times is hard right now with tea bags. Whitney Houston. Before I came over to Rio, I did go through quite a, a hard tough period of my life. Um, I was engaged to a girl for seven years. We were trying to start a family of our own and she ended up cheating on me, having an abortion behind my back, getting pregnant. Maybe I was the dad, maybe I wasn't because she was cheating. So that really, uh, that really affected me in a big way and I got really depressed, you know, and, and I was depressed for two years. And I knew I had to change something quite uh, dramatic about my life to kind of pull myself out the hole. I had a dream one night. All I could remember when I woke up from the dream visually was looking down over like a paradise of beach, palm trees, the sea. When I woke up, I had a word stuck in my head. And I'd never heard of the word before. And the word was Ipanema. And eventually it was a one-way ticket to Rio that sorted me out. My name's Tom Ash, I'm 34 years old and I've been living in this community for about three years. What brought me to Brazil in the beginning um, and what keeps me here was the music. I was a professional musician in, in London and I always you know, sought to listen to different music from different places. And you know, just slowly over the course of, of, of years, sort of Brazilian music started to become the focus and I wanted to get involved and you know I'm a professional musician I like Brazilian music then you know and uh, yeah I, I kind of sold everything in London and, and, and just went for it. When I got here uh, I, yeah, I absolutely loved it. Bob is Probably, he's one of the sort of old school gringos. He's got some serious balls, and he's been, he's been up there in Tavares Bastos for it must be over, well over 30 years. And uh, yeah, he's, uh, yeah he's, a, he's, a, he's a character. Well, I'm Bob Ned Carney. I'm English with a funny name because I'm half Indian. <laughs> and I uh, was brought, I had an art school education. I went straight out of art school, basically into films. And I worked in England in films, in commercials. You know, I never intended to live here. Hot, wonderful tea. Oh, we, um, 
we get the tea in from, from England because the tea in Brazil is absolute rubbish. You know? What happened was my marriage broke up. I was heartbroken. I went down to the dock of Southampton and I said, where is the next ship going to? What my friend had said, don't get on a plane, get on the ship and cry your tears into the ocean. And they said, there's a ship leaving at six o'clock in the morning to Ecuador. I said, I'm on it. And I got, uh, we were coming down the coast of Brazil to go round the Horn. And uh, the captain said, engine problems, so we've got to pull into port and it's going to be eight days. I, I settled for good here in 79. By this time I was just thinking, why did nobody tell me that paradise existed on earth? But everything stops for tea. So this is uh, Rocinha. This is the biggest favela in Brazil. 250,000 people live here. Very crazy place, a lot of noise, a lot of chaos, but you kind of get used to that after a while. And Great restaurants, great food. I'm the, the gringo, I'm a foreigner here, so I do stick out, so a lot of people uh, recognize me here now. The term uh, favelado is, um, is a term used to describe someone from a favela, uh, normally born and raised within a favela. But often if the term is used outside the favela, perhaps from, from someone from a wealthier community, when they use the term favelado, it's, it's often in a derogatory way. I've picked up the nickname Gringo Favelado here in the favela, and, um, and I, it's definitely an endearing uh, term, and I, I quite like the nickname that they, I've been given here. Well, yes. when he first told us about, about what he was wanting to do, uh, moving to Rio, uh, the only reservations that we had were when he told us that he was living in one of the favelas. Oi, Rocky. Bom dia. Tudo bem? Yeah, being his parents, we were naturally very, worried. Yeah, at first, a little bit yeah. worried about them, but um, Jody's. Uh, far more at home in in the favelas for some reason. What you have to do, Jose? Preach those two. Yeah, you just played graffiti, yeah. It sounds a bit strange to say that, but it, it makes life back in England very grey. He and I, friends. Favela is a formigueiro. Todos trabalham juntos, sabe? E as formigas são muito amigas uma da outra e todas as e todas trabalham em conjunto. E quando você para para abrir um formigueiro, você vê que está tudo desorganizado, mas não está. Cada uma está fazendo a sua função. A grande rainha disso tudo é a própria favela. My work is as a favela tour guide. I, I take tourists in Rio to the favela that I live in, Rocinha and conduct a five, six hour tour with them and show them the, the positive side. I think the people know that I work for a favela resident and a lot of the money goes towards community projects and stuff and people really, uh, people respect that and, and that helps me uh, to become more settled and welcomed into the favela. Anytime, any questions, fire away, okay? When I first moved to Pereira da Silva, I got the, the general impression of the, of the, of the community, of, of people knowing each other, and, and I you know, really sort of warmed to the place, and that got me, got me thinking about the idea of the music score.
The name of the project is Favela Brass and essentially it's a free music school. I think part of my decision to help the kids here probably stems a little bit back to where I'm from. I'm from a town called Doncaster. The one really good thing about, about Doncaster was, for me at the time, was that they have a, a jazz music project. I know what kind of a difference it can make, and I know that even a small area, even just this favela, you know, if you just a small music school can make a really big difference. This could be the kind of place where we, if we give, if they allow the opportunity for the kids here, I think some of them could really embrace it, and it could, could hopefully change a few lives. The dream for this year is to, to have them playing at the opening ceremony of the Olympics. That's, that's, the, that's the project's main objective and we're just going to go for it. This place, as I say, happened. I came up here because my maid, lady who ironed my shirts, lived up here and she got sick one day, I brought her home and I looked out of her window and went, oh my God. And I saw, of course, the most amazing, wonderful postcard view of Rio, which is right here. You know, I ended up living here, uh, making my life here, making more than a life here. Making, uh, just, it's a painting studio, it's a jazz club, it's a, uh, we sometimes have theater here. When I first got to Tavares Bastos, there were just a few shacks of, made of planks and bits and pieces. Um, 400 people, maybe. I was the first guy to build a brick building here. Uh, it used to be a farm, uh, and uh, where you, they, they, they had cows and coffee. There's still old coffee plants in the forest behind me. Engraçado que eu sou inglês aqui e você é o brasileiro. Mas você que tem um endereço bem de Londres escrito no, no, na, na, na camisa lá, eu não, é? And I decided to build my place here, and everybody said I was crazy. They said, oh, you know, the military will just take it away from you, you know, military regime at the time. People have made huge improvements to what they have. Uh, and the place has expanded greatly. There are now 8,000 people living here instead of 400. The favelas uh, perhaps have a better living now than they had um, 10, 15 years ago, and there's not so much poverty. Um, but they don't have opportunity. There's, there's a, a division within the, the administration keeping all these people poor, but then that's where, where they get their workforce from. My driver, the staff at my house, some of the staff at my office, they live in these communities. They live in Rocinha, they live in Vidigal, they live in a place called the Avela do Alemão. Uh, my driver, I've been to his house. His house is clean, everything is in order, he's got what he needs, uh, his children go to school, he's got his television, and that's one thing, you know, uh, years ago, I always joked, in the favelas, they might not have food, but they will have a TV. Apesar de ser uma cidade linda, belíssima, é, atraente, ela tem muito, muitos pontos negativos que precisam ser burilados, entendeu? Eu não poderia aconselhar, eu não tenho coragem de entrar numa favela, porque além de ser um lugar assim, pobre, não, que não teria problema nenhum, e a população, a, talvez a maior parte da população ser uma, uma população digna, mas ali se mistura 
coisas muito perigosas, é, é, fugitivos vindo de, de presídios, né? E ali eles fazem tráfico de drogas, tudo. Então eu não poderia aconselhar a ninguém a conhecer uma favela. Eu não pretendo conhecer nunca uma favela. Ok, guys, yeah, just keep passing through. You might have to give it a couple of pushes. A lot of tourists that come on the tours do do some research and they see the reviews and all the reviews are saying how safe and friendly the place is. It's the Rossinia Express. The Rossinia Express, yeah. <laughs> One way ticket straight to the hood. Most tourists do come onto the tours expecting a tranquil tour. Safe enough as well, you know, perfectly safe. Right then, guys. Here we are. Welcome to Rossinha. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you guys up around the corner to a nice viewpoint uh, and give you an introduction to the favela whilst you're enjoying the view, okay? So follow me. Everyone's good for the toilet, yeah? Because there's not really another opportunity for the toilet for another hour and a half. Okay, all good? Cool. Okay, let's try and keep to the side as well so the motor taxis and traffic can pass us. He's my friend. Love that dog. I'm a dog lover. Okay guys, yeah, line up against this wall. So this is the, the bulk of Rocinha. This is the biggest favela in Brazil. Uh, the favela started in 1929 as a small farm. The word Rocinha actually means little farm. Uh, yeah, they're firecrackers. They can mean a number of things. Birthday party, a football goal. If Flamengo scored, you know, you'll hear a lot of these firecrackers. Uh, they can also signal to the gang as well. Yeah. yeah. But you do hear these firecrackers. They are most days in the favela. Sometimes the middle of the night, you get woken up at two, three in the morning by these, uh, by the firecrackers. But they're, they're pretty common. The women don't need to go to the gym here to work on the legs. They just need to walk home. It's the rich. It's the rich girls that live in Ipanema that need to go to the gym to work on their, their bum and their legs. You can see Ipanema Beach over to the right hand side. Uh, Lagoa right in front, the lake. See Sugarloaf Mountain directly in the middle there. Yeah, this is one of the only places in the world where the poor look down on the rich. The poor have got the best views. Lovely. One, two, three. Lovely. See these five hexagonal buildings below us here? This is a private school. To send a child to this school costs 5,000 reais per month. The average income of a favela resident is 800 to 1,000 reais per month. It just goes to show you just how close the rich and the poor are, you know? We could throw stones on the, on the rich kids from here. We don't, but we could. Have you guys tried acai in, in Rio yet? You like it? So it's good, huh? 500 for LAL, 2500. All right, guys, to get to my apartment, I've moved into a few weeks ago, just to go down that alleyway down there, down some steps, about 30 steps, and that's my apartment. Beautiful view, stunning view, nice place. It's the, uh, the convoy. You'll see them quite a lot on the tour, the military police. They're always knocking around, knocking around this main road, mainly. With their oversized guns. Yeah. When the uh, Rio was announced, the, given the World Cup in the Olympics, the government knew that they had to do something about the gangs and the drug trafficking in the favelas. So they've sent in pacifying units, they called the military police, to come into the favela and station 24-7. So November 2011, the guys arrived in Rossinha. They used 24 tanks and seven helicopters when they came and pacified Rossinha. But it's, it's debatable. There's a lot of good things and bad things about the pacification though. Um, depending on who you're talking to. I'm Capitão Rocha. Eu comando a UPP do Santa Marta, 
O PP significa Unidade de Polícia Pacificadora, um projeto para implementar policiamento dentro das favelas. A pacificação do Santa Marta ela ocorreu em dezembro de 2008. Santa Marta realmente é a primeira comunidade a receber a UPP. One special thing that I, I need to show you is that wall. If you can see, we have a lot of holes of the bullets in, in, in the part of the, that wall. Because of this part is the it's a line shooting between the drug dealers and another drug dealers or a police officer. Uh, o número de homicídios no Santa Marta depois da pacificação é zero. Ninguém mais matou ninguém no Santa Marta depois da ocupação policial militar nesse modelo de pacificação. Yeah, this, this field in the past, drug dealers used to sell drugs and kill persons that are against the drug dealers or people that use drugs and don't have money to pay. We, drug dealers put some tires and put the person inside the tires and put fire on the person and the person disappears. Nowadays we can see children play soccer and no more homicidal inside of the favela. For us it's a, it's a pleasure. When the police came into the favela they did announce to the gang that they were coming so the gang did flee the favela momentarily but what the police didn't mean to happen was for the gang to sneak back into the favela which is what they've done. So now we've got the, the police and the gang living in the same community so there's yeah so there's there's a lot more shootings here um, yeah, before there was no shooting because uh, the, before, the gang ruled everything and the, before yeah. there was only shootings when there was turf wars you know another yeah. gang trying to t come and take over the favela which would only happen once or twice a year I've always had my doubts about the UPPs in the favelas. How many war fronts can you control at one time? Because there are hundreds and hundreds of favelas. A third of the population of Rio live in favelas. You know. Most of our police force live in these communities. You know, when you don't have enough money to pay your police force and your teachers, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, everything goes down, it blows down your education. Muitos órgãos públicos eles não se fazem presente como a polícia faz, né? Fica aqui 24 horas por dia. Então é fundamental que quando a UPP ou o projeto de segurança que for, que vai iniciar um trabalho em favela, que ele traga consigo projetos sociais para estreitar, para aproximar e para haver esse diálogo. Porque não existe uma cultura do policial se aproximar do morador de favela e nem do morador de favela se aproximar do policial. É, é, historicamente, a relação morador de favela e policial ela sempre foi muito hostil. Internamente, existe ainda um, um, um pouco de dificuldade do, do policial entender que é possível fazer policiamento, é possível fazer segurança pública, e, ao mesmo tempo ter uma relação amistosa com a população de bem. Boa tarde. Boa tarde. Um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, seis, I think the UPPs have had mixed success so far. In some communities they seem to have been pretty successful in, in getting rid of violence. However, I mean, I've got to say that, for example, in our project we've got 10 children from Fogatero, a neighbouring favela, which has a UPP, and you know, there, there's still quite a lot of violence there. They couldn't come to lessons yesterday, for example, because there were intense shootouts there. So. I think it still has quite a way to go. Normal. Quase todo dia. Quase todo dia. Sábado eles foram pro show, quando a gente voltou, aí deu tiro, domingo também deu tiro, e, e segunda, ontem, tô, e quer dizer, ontem, ontem, ficou... ontem também deu tiro. Por isso aí, que a gente não viu o projeto A gente não vê, porque a gente, minha mãe tava, a nossa mãe tava com medo de mandar a gente, a gente vir no meio da bala. When you have a shootout in, in a favela, you know you gotta gotta stay away from the windows. 
and and you know the kids kids end up just having to stay at home and, and lay on lay on the floor until it's all gone all passed over you know and they, they tell stories about their houses being hit by bullets kids turning up to lessons before with a handful of uh, bullet casings rifle casings that they've just sort of picked up off their off their veranda the situation's you know very hard for the kids in fucking dear I mean I, I, I don't even know the half of it. I don't, I don't live there. Você vive na comunidade, você já é como considerado sendo bandido. É bom sair um pouco, ser músico, pelo menos uma vez. Os turistas que aqui é bom, não sei o que. Aí chega aqui é outro, é outro mundo. O Rio de Janeiro fala que é bom, que não sei o que, mas é só bom, só bom na capa. Quando chega lá dentro. Favela não tem oportunidade não, por isso que tem que ser um pouco, tem que procurar, tem que procurar sempre o melhor, porque senão você vai se perder e vai chegar onde eles chegaram no tráfico de drogas. É, é isso que ele falou. So we have an incredibly convoluted system of uh, stars and stickers and smiley faces and colored cards that um, only our teachers and hopefully the kids understand. So yesterday's lesson, uh, if a kid comes and they behave themselves, they get a silver star. Uh, so Andres on nine. If they don't come, they lose all of their silver stars. So, uh, uh, I think um, the whole the whole project the whole process is a life lesson for the kids they're seeing that if they dedicate themselves to something then they can get a good result out of it and that there are possibilities out there and i think what's nice as well is that they they see the evolution of the project it's not just them that are learning to do instruments they know that we started here with nothing they see it when we managed to get some funding in to get some instruments Curry Club is an Indian uh, dinner that I do uh, at my house, the school, in the favela. Um, every so often I invite all my friends around, cook industrial quantities of vegetarian Indian, Indian food, uh, sell it, um, sell drinks and we use the profits um, to help with the finances of the Favela Brass Project. We decided that what we really need to do with the project now is, is to get ourselves out there, to play in public, you know, so people can see what we do. A gente está tentando fazer a abertura das Olimpíadas. Está todo mundo se comprometendo bastante e está confiante de que isso possa acontecer. Sábado, dia extremamente importante para a gente. A gente vai ter uma menina, como eu falei, uma menina uh, que é amigos de amigos e ela, ela está trabalhando na organização das Olimpíadas, dos eventos, dos culturais. Então ela vai assistir nosso show e de repente poderia ser um show de nós mesmos para a gente tocar nas Olimpíadas. <música> We have a jazz night once a month. They, they come for the music, they come for the paintings, they come for the building, they come for the amazing view. And also we do a mean caipirinha. <laughs> okay. Nobody believed in me when we started. They said, no, we'll come up here, and they did. And you, you, you get this now happening in more places. It's spreading. One of the side effects of the setting up of the BOPI headquarters here, Special Forces, known as the BOPI, was that people saw an example, an enviable example. We even had 
people of the middle classes who are going through a rough time down there, not able to pay their condominium fees or their kids' school fees, come up and start buying up here because it was safer up here than down there. And they could, get a, they could buy a place here very, very cheaply at the beginning. Now that's where the little bit of gentrification, as they call it, starts. It's, it's a normal process uh, because a city builds like that and all the rich people keep together and they send the poor people out there out of the way. And then the city expands, expands, expands. And then one day it bumps into something and they turn and, oh God, nasty poor people. Uh! <laughs> That's when the friction starts, you know. A community ficou pacificada, né? E antes você tinha né, as pessoas armadas, os bandidinhos armados para ir para cá na sua porta, na frente dos seus filhos, né? Então isso aí diminuiu totalmente. Mas não expulsou a bandidade do morro. Os bandidos continuam no morro, mas com menor potência. Com essa segurança, então o Vigal passou a ser uma favela muito visada. Então foi nessa oportunidade que foi, começou a chegar as pessoas assim, os estrangeiros, vamos dizer assim, né? Os estrangeiros que começaram a se sentir seguros, agora está falsificado, tem polícia no morro. Do dia para a noite começou a aumentar os preços de tudo. Sim, né? Você está com uma casinha aqui igual a minha. Aí ele oferecia 50 mil reais, a pessoa achava que era um grande dinheiro. Aí vendia por 50 mil reais, só que depois não conseguia comprar outro em outro lugar. Entendeu? Então a gente se sentiu ameaçado nesse sentido como se fosse o quê? Uma, uma remoção branca. Entendeu? Quer dizer, daqui a pouco os estrangeiros vão comprar tudo que é nosso aqui e não vai ter mais nenhum de nós no morro. É, meus filmes são muito realistas, né? Então eu falo de algumas coisas aqui que é, é, é melhor cantar do que falar, no caso, né? Ô oh, saudade da mariscada na nossa prainha Ir ao Pedrão, Portinho e Pedrinha A gente tinha muita união E agora o Vigigal tá sendo invadido A gente só dá de cara com um gringo E muita gente já perdeu seu chão não quer que ninguém vá embora, nem nada. A questão é que é livre economia. Quando as pessoas entendem que um, que um local é, tem uma possibilidade de valorização e etc., ela vende por livre e espontânea vontade. Uh, a primeira vez que eu disse aos meus amigos e à minha família que eu ia construir um hotel em uma favela, eles pensaram que a ideia era uma ideia completamente ideia Então, foi um longo tempo. They, they, they feel like comfortable to come and visit it and start liking it too. So we sell like the experience to, to come to a place that is safe, but it's a favela and you can stay in a good hotel, go to a good party, you can live as a real carioca. Se me presta a chave do quarto 6 para eu levá-la a eles. Uh, we are going to our best room. It's called the Deluxe Suite. It's the number six of the hotel. Uh, here we have 10 rooms, all with uh, the ocean view. But this one is like the best one because it's in the corner. Here it is. You can see like most of Zona Sul of Rio de Janeiro, Leblon, Ipanema, Copacabana Beach over there, and Lagoa. The view says for say everything, right? Hoje em dia a gente faz entre três a quatro festas por mês aqui e as festas são um sucesso. Eles ficam muito entusiasmados de saberem que perto da casa deles tem um lugar que é uma favela que eles podem vir tranquilamente. Isso é muito legal.
é minha primeira vez aqui e, e foi as minhas madrinhas que escolheram fazer esse pedido aqui. A gente então... não é do Rio, e aí a gente sempre escutou falar do Vidigal, do, da Vista, que é muito bonita. E também conheci a favela. E conheci a favela, é. é exatamente. Esse tanto de subir dá uma adrenalina, ao mesmo tempo que a gente tá, né, tipo assim, curiosa pra conhecer o lugar, tem um certo medo também, entendeu? A impressão de subir é, tipo assim, é tudo muito, é tudo muito estranho e tem, tem esse conflito de querer conhecer mais e de ter um certo medo. E há 10 anos atrás eu não viria, não. <risos> eu acho que o processo de gentrificação que acontece no Vidigal é igualzinho, se não muito parecido com o que aconteceu em Berlim, em Nova York, em vários lugares que você mesmo mencionou, Los Angeles e tal. É... Basicamente, a única diferença é que o Vidigal, como outras favelas no Rio, é uma área ocupada. Normalmente, em, em regiões privilegiadas, a gente sabe disso, é, que basicamente a única diferença é essa. Assim. Meu nome é Luiz Baltar, tenho 45 anos e considero a fotografia como uma forma de ativismo político, né, minha forma de, de militar socialmente. Né? Estou fotografando desde 2009, principalmente as questões de, de remoção e de direito da cidade. Você implanta o PP com a, com a intenção de, de, da segurança, né, de levar a segurança para a classe média, para as pessoas se sentirem seguras. Na verdade, é uma maneira de você começar uma remoção e levar a, a, o crescimento habitacional e mobiliário da, da cidade para esses lugares que antes eram periferia. E a Olimpíada e a Copa do Mundo e os outros mega eventos são uma desculpa perfeita para isso. Várias ações legais ou de, ou de, de respeito são abolidas para que seja cumprido esses contratos. E as pessoas estão sendo levadas para mais, para mais longe. Né? É, é, é muito triste você chegar e, e passar numa 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 comunidade onde foi totalmente removida, né? É uma são cenas que você parece que você está dentro de uma guerra né? e que não houve, né? The whole political system is just at the mercy of um, certain certain people's own special interests. And that's what favelas are. It's what's left over after the um, the special interests have had had their way. Bem-vindam, gente. Essa é a primeira favela da América Latina, que antigamente era é, Morro da Favela, aí depois foi mudando, virou Providência. Na minha opinião, é a melhor comunidade. Oi, querida. Ah, tu gosta de samba? E a Pretinha gosta do samba. Ah! Vambora, gente. Vamos conhecer a minha casinha. A minha casa me abriga. Pode entrar. No começo aconteceu assim, era um boatos, boatos. A prefeitura vai entrar dentro da comunidade, vai fazer reformas em casa. Não é aquela casa, mas graças a Deus eu me orgulho. Aqui é a minha sala. Tá, tudo bem, vamos lá. Todo mundo naquela euforia, né? Ali é a minha bonequinha, eu gosto todo mundo que veja a minha... Eu digo que é a minha MNN House. Olha que linda, eu adoro boneca. Essa aqui é a minha Emily Anne House. Ela tá de castigo. Depois de um tempo, aí veio uns, uns documentos, uns papelzinhos safados. Esse prédio aqui, ele vai ter que ser removido. Vai ter que ser o quê? Ah, esse prédio, ele vai ter que sair, que eles vão construir um outro. Eu falei, mas como é que é? Não entendi nada. Quer ver o visual? Dá a continuação. Você acha que eu vou perder essa maravilha? Você acha que eu vou perder essa maravilha? Aí a gente começou a nossa luta. Não, não é assim. Nós queremos projeto na mão, nós queremos estudo. Porque não é assim que a banda toca. Vocês entram dentro da casa, a gente mete o pé e aí? Eles pretendiam fazer um prédio na qual eu, moradora, não, ia, não iria participar, não poderia morar. Uma 
mundo para que abra a felicidade. Eu sou uma mulher muito feliz. Esse é o meu mundo. Isso aqui é a minha vida. O nome já diz assim, providência. Se é para tomar providência, a gente vai botar a cara e vamos lutar. O que vier... Oi, bom dia. Boa tarde. Tudo bem? <laughs> I'm going to show you how the mailing system works in a minute. I But think the Olympics will run smoothly in Rio, yeah. Um, I'm not too sure what the situation will be as regards to the pacifying police after the Olympics. I don't think anyone knows. You see the blue, green and yellow buildings just here. Uh, behind there, in the corner of this road, the road goes down. Rua Deutsch, Road 2, and then behind that, the housing over there. That's where the majority of the trouble happens. Further down this road, it's like up against that far edge of the favela, basically. Because the, uh, the military police, they patrol these main roads a lot. So the gang are, are, are further away from the main road. You know, they're up on, on the edges of the favela now. I see them pretty much every day, but to me, they're just ordinary people doing their, their job. You know, they're nothing to do with me. I don't really have much interaction with them. I don't feel threatened by them. They're doing their thing and I'm doing my thing, so that's the way it is. Are you interested in having a little game of football with the kids? <laughs> Now, yeah. Yeah? Okay, cool. Yeah, and you? I'm in. You? Vamos. You. Yeah, come on. <laughs> So the tour I'd done a few days ago was a little bit different because halfway through the tour um, a shootout basically happened and quite a few shots were fired. Um, the shots were quite far away uh, from us but because of the echo that you get in the favela it sounded quite near and it was a little bit scary, I think, for a couple of the, the tourists on the tour. Um, there's a shooting down, further down in the alleyway where there's, we normally take the tour. So I'm gonna have to take, go up, back up to the road and go around the shooting. This doesn't happen very often, actually. É melhor aqui ou na rua? Na rua, sim? Passa a rua dois. Okay, tá bom. Valeu, obrigado. Até em breve. So do you think like when the shootings happen, it's like uh, most of the time people are shooting in the air or shooting towards someone? No, they sh they'll be shooting at each other for sure. Okay. Yeah. Not yeah. like warning shots, no? No, no, no. They'll okay. always be shooting at each other, the okay. gang and the police for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, we will try not, we won't go too near it though. I kind of know where it is. So I'm taking you around it. Sometimes when I'm at home I can hear gunshots in Rossinha. I will sometimes grab my camera and, and record. You know, the, the police aren't doing a good job there. Um, it, they're just making life more dangerous for the people there. They're not going to get rid of the, the gangs. That's pretty evident to see. We're here. We can go and sit down now and rest our legs. 
and meet Zazinho and see the DJ school. Yeah, I love working for Zazinho and having that connection with the DJ school that a lot of the tour money helps to fund. My name is Renato José Valdez da Silva. I was born in Hosinha, I live in Hosinha, I work as a tour guide and we have a free DJ school here called Spin Rosinha. I don't like to say you get used to it, but in a way, when you live here and you hear gunshots, you're like, oh yeah, well, the police and the bandits have decided to have a conversation. It's a conversation, you know? I, I don't think drug dealers should be instituting a law in a community, or, but I don't think there should be corrupt police abusing people either, pointing guns in their faces and being physically aggressive with them. I just think we, we want policing, but we want respect, you know, we just want to be treated like basic citizens, like everybody else. You know? If we could pay the police officers a better wage, we would have less corruption. Can I blame our police officers for going corrupt? I'd be a hypocrite. Quando algo desse cunho negativo né, relacionado à corrupção, à tortura acontece, realmente há uma desmotivação dos policiais porque é comum os órgãos de imprensa é, noticiarem com maior intensidade, com maior destaque esse tipo de ação. Isso acaba desmotivando o policial por, a, por achar que aquela, aquela série de ações positivas que ele fez ao longo da sua trajetória se torna sem importância. Estude isolada de um policial, de uma minoria, não pode refletir sobre a opinião de todo um projeto. Eu estou no PP do Borel há três meses e o motivo da minha vinda é implementar algumas iniciativas aplicadas no Santa Marta aqui nessa comunidade, que é uma comunidade maior, com um histórico de violência muito maior do que o Santa Marta. No último sábado, nós tivemos uma nova troca de tiros entre policiais e traficantes, onde três traficantes foram atingidos, um veio a falecer. Nós recebemos algumas denúncias anônimas de que os traficantes estariam se reunindo para atacar os policiais e para efetuar ataques aqui nessa base da, da UPP em retaliação à, à morte desse traficante. Nós estamos, sim, correndo o risco de sofrer um ataque. After the Olympics, I don't know, I mean, a, a lot of people in the favela are talking about, you know, the police will probably leave and we'll probably have a war here between drug gangs for control of selling points of the drugs. A minha perspectiva com relação à cidade do Rio de Janeiro para os Jogos Olímpicos é que a política de pacificação, ela aumente, mas que haja também um, uma reavaliação do projeto para que o projeto não se enfraqueça. For us, as a project, the Olympics is fantastic. I have to say, I do worry that for the city as a whole, the Olympics may be a kind of Pyrrhic victory. And as you have to ask yourself, is planning all this huge amount of spending around one single event, is that a good way to plan a city? The big um, challenge for us with this Olympic thing is to, to reach the, the, the meet people who make the decisions, you know, the, you know, the people who, who, could, who could put us on at the Olympics. We have to, we have to network and try, and try and find a way for, for the right people to see the project. And, and we had a great breakthrough when, when we got, got contact with um, uh, this uh, a, a lady who works in the, in the company that is organising the Olympic ceremonies and the cultural side of the Olympics. 
and so when she, when she said she was coming to the to, to the market to see his play, I mean that's just a, an amazing you know opportunity for us. O show para a gente foi tranquilo porque a gente treina três vezes na semana, então a gente já sabia todo o repertório, a gente já, já tinha tudo gravado. Eu vim aqui para assistir a apresentação, então, assim, é a primeira vez que eu vejo o projeto. E eu fiquei surpreendida com o talento das crianças num espaço muito curto de tempo. Eles estão num nível muito bom. We really need the light to shine on our project and achieve what we want to achieve with the project, which is to establish a long-term tradition where the kids turn into the teachers of the project. Eu gostaria de ter uma carreira como músico e a gente ficar conhecido no, na cidade, no país. Hum. Kids get to play at the Olympics. That's going to be something that they can be proud of for the rest of their lives. That they'll always remember it, you know. I think I was never meant to be British. My wife tells a story. She says, um, what happened is the stork was delivering babies, and every time he delivered a baby, the parents who were happy gave him a drink to drink to the health. So the stork got completely drunk. And he had one last baby to deliver, which he was meant to deliver to Brazil. Um, but as he was flying out of Denmark over England, he got the hiccups and the baby dropped into England and I got stuck there, um, but I was meant to have been here. In a country where so many things have gone, you know, so wrong, uh, that went, you know, that's something that's gone right here, the music. For me as a, as a live musician, this place is absolutely great for me. I play on Friday nights at the Pedro de Sal. The Pedro de Sal is um, an important cultural centre for, 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 for black Brazilian music and they, they've accepted me in, you know, even, even somewhere as sort of as sacred as that, you know, within sound music. I absolutely loved it, you know, to be plugged in in the, in the middle of that experience. There's uh, a Louis Armstrong quote that I like, which is, uh, what we play is life. Hoje eu gostaria de anunciar que essas essas crianças aqui foram selecionadas e vamos tocar nas Olimpíadas, sim, nos palcos das cidades durante as Olimpíadas. Então muito muito parabéns às crianças. I just wanted to be able to to sort of pass that on and and to give the kids here that opportunity. I think about the dream a lot. Yeah, I think, you know, what if I hadn't have had it? You know, where would I be? Maybe I'll still be depressed in England. Uh, who knows? But uh, yeah, I, th I think about it a lot and I'm just really thankful that I pursued the dream and just went for it, you know? As regards to the future, I certainly see myself living here for a long time. Um, in Rio, probably for the rest of my life, I absolutely love it. In my eyes, Rio is the most beautiful city in the world. Yeah, Rio saved my life, so I'm, uh, I'll be here for a long time.